Hi everyone, it's Fuelstrom. A few weeks ago I made a video about Shift Screen, an app that allows you to use a secondary screen as an extension to your iPad, really using the full screen of your secondary monitor. Earlier this week, there was an update to the app uh, releasing Shift Screen 3.0, and it really has many new features, making Shift Screen even more user-friendly than before. Let's dig in to all the new features and all the changed things in that update. <music> The first thing you notice when opening the app is the address bar that you see over there uh, and it is really a huge advantage uh, compared to the previous version. So you have an address bar, you also have an open file button which will allow you to open a file from your files app of course. You also have a refresh button over here. But why is it such a big deal? It's because if you would use a uh, shift screen in split screen, for example like this, let me just open it like that. It's much easier now to just click there on the top uh, part over there and the address bar and it can just type over there. You can really see in big letters which websites you want to serve to. Uh, for example, yeah, youtube.com, let's say. Uh, it will make it much easier to do it like that than instead of like looking at this tiny screen here on your iPad. Now when hitting the command button, you get these shortcuts. So it's a whole list over here and you can find also the full list at shiftscreen.app, which is the website, of course, of Shiftscreen. And uh, there are a few interesting things here. For example, here you have, you can switch between screen one and screen two. Those are the equivalent of desktops. I actually didn't mention it in my previous video. So if I hit command one, I go to my first screen over here, which is my first desktop. And command two, I can switch to my second desktop, which is very fun. And as you notice in the background also, uh, of course, it also gets instantly changed over there. That is really fast. Now, what else is interesting is if you, for example, want to zoom in and zoom out. So by zooming in and zooming out, sometimes websites are rendered too large, especially if they're in split screen or uh, just websites that just don't get properly rendered on the iPad. So command minus and command plus really help with that. Uh, so that's really useful. Before you had to dig into here and they have to scale up there, but now by just hitting command minus or command plus, it makes it much easier. What else you can do is you can also go back and forward. So instead of taking your cursor and hitting the button over there, sometimes having a chance that you might miss that button. So just hit command arrow, you can go back to the previous website and command next or command right to go to the next website again. Another useful shortcut is command L, which allows you to just search very quickly to get to that search bar over there or address bar. It makes it much faster to go from one website to the other. Now the most useful shortcuts are actually the most basic ones, which is for example, command N to add a new window. If I now hit command W, it will close that window again. Now if I hit command N on an existing window, then it will attach the window to the side of it, which will allow me to search again. And as you notice over here, it will immediately ask for the search term or website, which you can just type like that. So shift screen, for example, dot app, and that's their website. There we go. So in addition to window management, that was also new. We also have now keyboard shortcuts that are really useful. Now let's dig into the settings because there's also a few new settings over there. Just clicking over here. And as you can see here, it already shows me my monitor size and also the insets. So I'm just curious about what that will be. We can change the inset in the settings. Now, anyway, let's have a look at settings and there are a few new things over here. Now, if you look at cursor style, before there were three options, I think, but now it's just two. Uh, the yellow hand, which is like an emoji, is gone now. And it's now just a, um, a pointer or the circle. Now, what's also new is you can resize the cursor. So if you make it smaller like this and I go back, I can see here that the cursor is much smaller than in the beginning of the video. And that is very nice. Uh, some people would even prefer this over the circle on, on iPad. Next here we have the top bar height. So if you look here very closely, if I increase this, then the top bar here is much larger. I'm just curious though, if it also has an effect on my screen. Oh yes, it does. <laughs> then it's really useful because if you have trouble hitting that address bar, which is quite small, especially if you're on a on split screen, then uh, you can increase the size so it's easier to hit. So that's really uh, nice as well. The frames per second or the FPS for mirror mode, you can increase over here to 30 frames per second, for example. And then we have here monitor size settings that I haven't seen before. So this here is that inset that you can see here on the screen. If you increase it, then you can see here that the inset, if you, I'm not sure if you can really notice right now, but now there are black bars coming on the side. Now, that is something you don't like right now, so I'm just gonna <laughs> decrease it. Now, this is very useful if you have a monitor that like overscans everything, or maybe it's your dock or your dongle that, like doesn't give the, the correct image. So with this here, you could add, you could like 
shrink it a bit so it would fit onto the screen. This is all the same window scale as well, desktop mode, all of this is the same. If you go to advanced settings, then also that looks the same. Now along with the update and the new features, there are also a few bug fixes. For example here, I'm in Google Docs and Google Docs works seamlessly. So let's say for example, hello everyone. Everything works the way you want it to work. So for example, I will select everything here. Selecting works well. I can go to heading. I can right click. Everything works the way you'd like it to. So um, Google Docs support is now improved. And apparently also zooming in and out has also been fixed. If you now grab your web page, you can just zoom in and zoom out the way you'd normally do on your iPad. Now, after digging deeper into the settings, I've noticed that there's no more option to change the maximum amount of windows. So if you look at the change log, you will see that from now on you can use uh, maximum four windows in, I mean, at the same time, now, instead of six before just six, and you could reduce it to less if you'd like. But that's actually quite logical. I mean, I've never had the need to have six windows side by side. So it's now been reduced to four, and I think it will also have a good a good impact on the performance of the app and of the websites that are being rendered. So it's very clear that Shift Screen 3.0 is a huge update, making it much easier now to work with Shift Screen, even though you have this small screen estate now. Uh, you can just grab windows, you can just resize them, put them in the right order, use shortcuts to just do whatever you'd like over here. So that makes it really much easier to work with. Definitely check it out. It's in the App Store. I put the link in the description. Now, of course, you limit it still to web apps. You cannot really add apps over there because it's, yeah, iPadOS isn't allowing that. Let's hope, though, that in WWDC that would be possible. But until then, or even if they don't add it to iPadOS 14, this app is really amazing. Definitely check it out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.